the entire episode is a sharp call, you know, <laughs> because, because there's so few games. My sense yeah. is that the feedback you got is from, from your buddies calling about all of them. So let's do this. I was going to say every, every game people are different on than us, except the 49ers in Dallas. So that's all I was going right. to say. We can go through every game if you want. I want to say, but I also like a little behind the curtain here. One of our more popular segments on YouTube is the Sharp Calls segment. So I want to make sure we do it. So why don't we do, like do a quick Sharp Calls of it. and you pick the one game that got the most feedback. Because I have a feeling I know what it's going to be. You and I haven't discussed, but I am curious if it's the game I'm thinking about. So for Sharp Calls, what is the one game you got the most feedback on that people disagreed with you? Um. I would say the the biggest the biggest argument I've gotten with other pros was that Rams Cardinals game. Almost every group I've talked to is on the Cardinals. I'll tell you right now, it's it's going to be us with the public if we're taking the Rams. That seems like that's the public play, and the pros they love this Cardinals number. You, even the Hopkins was out. Again, you have to shop around. Some books have it up to four and a half. I've seen it drop at other books to three and a half. Like after the Hopkins news came out, the Hopkins was going to play in this. So. Talking to the professional, I think they're looking at it from the other standpoint of, okay, Stafford has not played well. You can go through the numbers. He has simply not played well. If you put his numbers up this year compared to golf from last year, golf statistically had a better year. And, like, if you – again, everyone has different QB grades. I graded out golf almost just the same as I did Stafford. Again, a lot goes into that. The running was better last year for this team. But you can't use that excuse. Stafford had Sonny Michelle the last month who's been arguably one of the best running backs in football, and he's been turning over almost 1.3 times per game. That's terrible for December. Heading into the playoffs, we saw last week he turned it over in a pivotal point that really flipped that game. So the big argument from these guys is, who the hell is Stafford to be catching this many points? Like, this guy has time and time again choked in these kind of spots. I'm getting a dog. You know, what? what like we just said, you can get plus four at some books, some four and a halves. That's a big number for Stafford to be favored by. My pushback to them was, you don't think the bookmakers know that they're going to get money on the Cardinals? They were going to get a lot of it. And I just looked at the action app. It's not that split. Like, it's pretty close, the money and the bet. So, I don't know. I pushed back on where, yeah, if it was 75% on the Rams and 75% of the money on the Rams, I would say, okay, these guys have a point. Maybe I'm overrating this Rams team. The fact that the money's so close and the bets are so close, and we're seeing the fluctuation in the different books, it just shows me that you should just shop around because like this pro group that likes the Cardinals, they've already come in on certain books and you can see that number down to three and a half. Other books are still sitting at four and a half. That means they haven't either been accepted at those books or they haven't bet them. So that's what I'm trying to explain to people. It's like, if you like the Cardinals, don't take the three and a half, take the four and a half of these other books because you're, you're literally, those are key numbers. You're crossing four, four and a half. Those are key numbers in football, especially. I feel like the only thing keeping people from going all in on the Cardinals is Cliff Kingsbury. I, I think Matt Mitchell, and I, I say this kind of tug in cheek, but I think that everybody who follows football and bets on football pays attention to the fact that Cliff Kingsbury in the latter half of any season he's ever coached in falls apart. His teams just don't play well. And statistically, there is nothing to dispute that. And the only game in which they've really played well in the second half of this season, after they were running away with their division in the first half of the year, was against the Cowboys, and the Cowboys haven't been looking as good. Other than that, every metric you look at favors the Cardinals. Stafford has been fading aggressively in the second half of the year. Arizona's defense has been playing better than Los Angeles's defense. In the two games they played this year, Arizona outgained Los Angeles by more than a hundred yards in the first game by about 60 in the second game, more than a hundred. Like this is a good spot for the Cardinals, not to mention some of the wild card dog trends that I mentioned wild card dogs by a touchdown or less. I got this from Chris Raybon listening to the action network podcast wild card dogs by a touchdown or less since 2003, 28, 14 and one. So the only thing we don't, and, and also, by the way, the Rams just signed Eric Weddle to play <laughs> yeah. in the secondary for them. So, like, and a key, a key, again, I'm not a huge trend better, but I do like trends. Arizona eight and one on the road 
against the spread and straight up this season. I mean, so that's another get, thing that points to the Cardinals. I get and like why people are betting the Cardinals. If you if you have any hesitation, it's because of Cliff Kingsbury. And yet you still like the Rams. I got to say, I think I like the Cardinals. Yeah. And again, that's fair. But like I'm already on two other short dogs. All three of these short dogs ain't winning. I can tell you that much. I mean, that trend's not 100%. Here's again, the flaw with what you're saying, though. You're you're assuming there is a correlation from one dog to the next dog to the next dog. It's like the other day we were ha- were we having a conversation? No, I was having a conversation with somebody else about playing roulette, right? And how people <laughs> like if it bets if it goes red, 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 the next thing they bet is black, as if what has happened previously has an impact on what happens next. There's no correlation between. By the way, th- it could mean that the wheel is broken, and you should just keep betting on red. But in this case, there's no correlation between what is happening in those two short dogs that we already like and this game. And who's to say like that that this isn't the better bet? I think it's the Cardinals. And you're 100% wrong. Everything's connected, Chad. You'll figure it out as you get older with age. But everything in this world is connected one way or another. And yeah, that's a fair argument. Like I told you, other pros are on the Cardinals. All the trends, everything points to the Cardinals. Why isn't this number three? You don't think sports books have these numbers? Like you don't think... That, that was my argument to all these other guys who were just like, you're getting free points, free money against Stafford here. And I said to them, that's a fair argument. Same thing. We'll talk about this Bengals and Raiders game. Since he hasn't won a playoff game since 1992, right, we're getting a dog let's, plus let's, 250 or plus 225 in the Raiders. That's why pros are betting the Raiders here. It's like they're completely throwing out all the info like we gave out about a short week, the better offense, better defense, since all these things. So. Yeah, well, it's that's why it's funny that you said that about like these things aren't connected. You're you're right, they're not. It's just like you just said the stat yourself. It, the, the odds of that all three of these dogs winning or covering outright, I mean, it's got to be less than a fifteen percent chance. I mean, that's just yeah. that's an anomaly. Is kind of what you just said after you said that stat. I feel like even though you are a full generation younger than me, there is a hundred percent truth to the idea that. You are wise beyond your years, and I am naive beyond my years. <laughs> and the only the, – see, that's the joke, though, Chad, is the cartoon. If someone looked at the cartoon on our app of our the favorites, you would be the 30-year-old. I'd be the 50-year-old. And that's what I love about this relationship. You've lived a harder life than I have. <laughs> I definitely have done more groundwork, more digging. I don't know if I've lived a harder life, but I've definitely done more uh, – Your hands had bricks. calluses in, 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 the, in like – my hands, I don't have calluses. That's yeah. the bottom line. No, I did landscaping for like four years to make money every summer. That was my yeah. life. You know, the, the Millmans, we don't, we don't dig in the dirt.